Hi, I'm Nathan with Holston Gases. During this training module, we're, we're going to discuss the different types of high pressure cylinders and how to identify the cylinders and the contents of the cylinders. First, we're going to start, we're going to start with talking about the different sizes of the cylinders. So here we have an industrial large cylinder. It's approximately 300 cubic feet. Then we have an industrial medium cylinder that's approximately 200 cubic feet of gas volume. And then we have an industrial small cylinder what can, which has approximately 125 cubic feet. These three cylinders are known as industrial size cylinders because these cylinders are only rented or leased to the customer. Then next we have our smaller customer owned size cylinders starting with a Q size cylinder that has approximately 80 cubic feet of gas volume. Then we have a 40 cubic foot cylinder known as a 40 which is approximately 40 cubic foot and then we have an R size cylinder. The small cylinder right there holds approximately 20 cubic feet of gas and so these three cylinders are typically purchased by the customer. While the Q cylinder can be purchased it can also be rented or leased to the customer. So these are the different sizes of high pressure cylinders that we're going to talk about today. And so next we're going to talk about the identification process of the cylinder. How to identify what's in the cylinder and the stampings on the cylinder and to make sense of what the numbers and letters mean on the cylinder. So now we're going to start looking at the identification markings on the cylinder. This will tell us who owns the cylinder, the test date of the cylinder, the capacity of the cylinder, the contents, and the hazards associated with the cylinder. So the first thing we'll look at is the neck ring. The neck ring is how we identify who owns the cylinder. And as you can see on our cylinders, Holston Gases is stamped on our neck rings, as you can see right here. Okay. The next thing that we'll look at is we'll look at the data label. The data label is, is on all cylinders and this is the only way to positively identify the contents of the cylinder. Also this tells us what hazards may be associated with this cylinder. And as you can see here we have a 75% argon, 25% carbon dioxide mixture and it has a non-flammable gas placard. This tells us that this gas is non-flammable and it tells us the contents of the cylinder. This is the only way to identify what's in the cylinder. It is not a good idea to use the color scheme of the cylinder to identify what's in the cylinder. Since all distributors have different color schemes for their gas mixtures or the contents of the cylinders. So only go by the data label to identify what's in the cylinder. If the data label is missing, that cylinder should not be used. Now we're going to talk about these two numbers. This is the DOT number and this is the serial number. Okay. The DOT number, the Department of Transportation, is the governing body over the use of high pressure cylinders. The next three digits is the type of material uh, that the cylinder is made out of, 3AA, and then we find the operating pressure of the cylinder. And then again, this is the serial number, and then Holston Gas Company is stamped again on the cylinder. The 2400 uh, Right, that's indicated right here tells us the operating pressure. Also we can use what's known as a five-thirds rule to find out what the rupture disc is set, setting is of the cylinder. Now the rupture disc is located on the back of the cylinder valve. We'll find that right here. And so if we use a the, the five-thirds rule, we'll take the 2400 PSI multiply by 5 which is 12,000 divide that by 3 and that'll be 4,000 that tells us what rupture disc is in the back of the cylinder and you'll also see 4,000 stamped on the back of the rupture disc on this particular cylinder since there is hydrogen in the cylinder and it's flammable gas there's a lead seal or a lead filling inside of the rupture disc that will melt away at 212 degrees Fahrenheit and that is also stamped on the back of the rupture cap here. And here's another look at a rupture cap um, that I have here in my hand. You can see the 4000 rating stamped on it and also the 212 Fahrenheit rating for the lead seals you see inside that hole. And then there's the inside of the rupture disc. So the rupture disc will burst at 4000 psi while these lead seals will melt at 212 degrees Fahrenheit. So the next thing to, to be familiar with is the, the dates on the cylinder. 
on this cylinder, this is the only date on this cylinder, and this tells us that this cylinder was manufactured in January of 2014. The plus tells us that it's capable of being 10% overfilled based on the 2400 PSI rating of the cylinder that we've seen earlier. Okay, and then the star indicates that it's uh, eligible for a 10 year retest. So the next time that this cylinder would have to come in to be tested would be 2024. And then we'll look over here on this other cylinder on the left and we'll notice that there's many dates on it. Okay, and then to just talk real quickly about these dates, you'll see that we have a, a 12, 91, with a plus and a star, this tells us that this cylinder was tested on December 12th, I'm sorry, in December in 1991. And these are the markings of the individuals that tested them. Also, a 10% overfill and a star indicating that it's due in 10 years. Okay. Then on the next line, you can see March 2003, and then a plus and a star and this one has UT next to it. That tells us that it was ultrasonic tested rather than hydrostatic tested on that particular test day. And then down here we see August 2014. The plus indicating a 10% overfill and the star indicating that it needs to be retested uh, in 2024. Now this cylinder, um, the manufacture date of this cylinder, this is an older cylinder, was 1959. So if we look and we see the DOT number up here, and then we can look down here and we can find January 59. 159 tells us that this cylinder was manufactured in 1959. So this is a very old cylinder, so some of the numbers are laid out a little bit differently, but it was tested five times. If we look at all the different markings on it, but these are the these right here are the most recent. And so that's how to identify the numbers on the cylinders. And then lastly, you might find a sticker like this on your cylinder. This is just a batch sticker. This is uh, helpful for quality control purposes uh, to track what batch this cylinder was pumped in. And that pretty much sums up how to identify the cylinders and how to identify what the contents of the cylinders are, the test dates, serial numbers, and the ownership of the cylinder. So as a recap, these six cylinders are the different types of high pressure cylinders that are available. In review, this is a 300 cubic foot cylinder, otherwise known as a large. This is a 200 cubic foot cylinder, otherwise known as an industrial medium. Here is an industrial small, which is approximately 125 cubic feet. And these three cylinders are either rented or leased to the customer. And then we have our customer owned size cylinders. Here we have a Q cylinder, which is approximately 80 cubic feet. Then we have a 40 cubic foot cylinder, and it's uh, known as a 40. And then we have an R size cylinder, which is approximately 20 cubic feet. And these three cylinders, like I said, are typically purchased uh, by the customer. Now, the Q size cylinder can be leased or rented as well. So that sums up this training module. I hope you have found this information helpful. And thank you for watching.